this video, we're going to take a look at working with some procedural textures in Octane for Cinema 4D. And for this video, I'm using the machinery O2.C4D scene. So I'm going to create a material here and let's make this a glossy material. So I'll go to basic, set the material type to glossy and let's create some procedural textures. So we got checker. Let's also create uh, marble, noise, ridged fractal, sine wave, turbulence, and that'll work for now. So we're going to talk about these textures. Procedural textures uh, use an algorithm to create a pattern. The pattern uh, that's generated is, in, is grayscale, so it's black and white colors. So they're a great alternative to image textures because they render faster, use less memory. Uh, they're great for breaking up the look of a shader if you want to add some kind of dirt or some kind of variation. And of course, you can also use them as an input to mix with image textures to add a little bit more visual interest to them if you need to. But we're just going to take a look at uh, quickly at how they work in this video. So let's take our glossy material here and apply it to some of the parts of this model. So I'm going to go and expand the com tower shell group right here and apply this to poly surface one and also shields. So that's the result. And uh, let's plug some of these textures into the diffuse channel. Makes it very obvious to see what's going on. So the checks is pretty straightforward. It's a checkerboard pattern, right? So if I rotate here a little bit, you can start to see that checkerboard pattern, but it's very large. So I'm going to select this and choose UVW transform to apply a transform node. Let's neaten this up a little bit. And this way I can easily scale it. So let's scale it down. And you can see very simply, it is just a checkerboard pattern that is applied to the surface, black and white squares. It's a great way to sort of check things like UVs on your surface and the octane view, uh, as well as uh, other effects. Um, but in terms of options, it doesn't have a whole lot. If I go to the basic section in the shader, I really have this projection and that's about it. Let's next check out noise. So I'm going to plug noise into the diffuse channel. And again, I need to do something about the scale. So what I could do is let's just plug the same transform uh, into the transform import here. And then we can kind of play with the scale a little bit. So I'll bring it up, get it to the point where we can actually see, see the pattern. And now I can see it pretty clearly. So if I go into noise, this one has more options. So I can change the type of noise. Perlin is the default. We also have turbulence, circular, chips. And then of course, for each of these, we can change the number of octaves. They're basically inputs to the algorithm. In this case, it's not gonna be super obvious what's going on until maybe we adjust some other settings. Okay, so turbulence, you can kind of see as I lower the octaves, the complexity of the pattern is reduced. We also have the omega, which can kind of uh, enhance certain parts of the turbulence. So in other words, if I bring it over this side, we see that more of that uh, high detail. If I bring it over this side, we see more of the low detail. Uh, invert, pretty self-explanatory, inverts it. And of course, we also have gamma and contrast. And this is a really useful texture and it's great also for adding a little bit of noise breakup to image textures. You can put it into the power of the image texture or use it with a mixed texture and so on. That's the basic idea behind noise. Let's take a look at marble next. So I'm going to plug marble into the diffuse channel. And again, let's plug this transform in here. And let's bring the scale now let's see if we're going to just first adjust some uh, okay so the power has been set to zero so I need to bring up the power there we go now we can see it and now we can of course adjust the scale 
and this is another great way to create kind of uh, turbulent textures. And we also have uh, offset and omega again to kind of enhance certain aspects of the detail, variance, and octaves. And of course, our transform input. So very similar to noise, just a different type of noise. Rigid fractal, again, this is also similar to the noise textures that we've seen. So let's do this. Let's put it into diffuse. Put this transform into transform. There we can see, again, very similar power is kind of like an overall brightness. We have an offset. Lucanarity, which is another way to adjust to kind of look at the detail, the amount of detail. And of course, octaves as well. So another type of noise texture. Now let's take a look at sine wave. Let's make this a little bit easier to see. There we go. Put sine wave into diffuse and transform into transform. And let's adjust the scale. The sine wave is going to produce this kind of gradient. We also have different types of sine waves. So we have straight up sine wave, triangle, and saw wave, and they kind of determine the type of gradient. So you'll notice saw wave goes for a very hard edge, dark to lighter color. If we look at triangle, we have sort of um, triangle. If you can imagine looking at a shaded triangle from the top, you can see that we have this bright band in the middle, kind of like the peak of that triangle, and then a gradient on either side fading to black. And then of course, sine wave is gonna be similar to triangle, but much smoother. It's gonna be kind of like almost rounded. So this is great for uh, things like, you know, ripples on a uh, sand dune, if you're gonna plug it into bump or something like that. And then in overall terms of attributes, pretty much type and transform and projection. We'll talk about projection in another video. Those are your main options there for sine waves. So pretty straightforward. And then finally, let's take a look at turbulence. Turbulence again is going to be really similar to the other types of noise that we've taken a look at. So if I zoom in, you can sort of see, let's adjust that transform, maybe make the scale a bit bigger. Again, power for brightness, we have an offset. In this case, it kind of creates kind of like an animated cloud kind of effect as you adjust that. We have octaves, omega. Use turbulence, if you turn this on, then it kind of layers the turbulence on top of like a fractal noise. And then we have invert and gamma. So I've reloaded the machinery O2.C4D scene just to quickly get rid of a lot of those changes. And I'm looking at this material called Com Tower, Com Tower Mat. And that is the material that is applied to this uh, base here of our tower. So let's zoom in on that a little bit. And I just want to kind of show how you can use a procedural texture to kind of add some visual interest to an image texture. So right now, this kind of stony look is made courtesy of these image textures, which were created through Substance Painter. And uh, what I want to do is I'm going to create a noise texture and plug it into the power of this image texture. And this texture is the one that's going into diffuse and specular since this is a metallic material. So I plugged it into the power, the next thing I'm going to do is select this noise texture and click on UVW transform to create a transform node so I can adjust the scale. So I'm going to bring the scale down. Now let's get to something like this. So you can see it's adding a little bit more breakup to the texture. Uh, then I'll go into the noise uh, section here and I'm going to choose chips and play a little bit with the uh, contrast and the gamma. And maybe the omega as well. That's a little bit too much. As you can see, I can start to create something that almost looks like kind of a stone, like this is made out of stone or something like that. Uh, let's do this. And bring up 
with the contrast. So just kind of finding ways to kind of break up that texture. So just another way you can use procedural textures in a way that kind of uh, enhances your image textures without creating additional memory overhead. So that's the basics of working with procedural textures in Octane 4 Cinema 4D.